first place Cardinals come to town, you can be sure that it will not be a holiday weekend to kick back and relax. On the other hand, St. Louis knows better than to expect their cross-division rivals to take a step back. Christmas is five months away, but Christmas in July had them spreading good tidings at the plate yesterday. And it was J-Roll who delivered the biggest gift of the day. And he delivered it in grand style. It's going to be tough to encore yesterday's offensive explosion by the Phillies, but we'll see what they can do today as they wrap up this three-game series against the St. Louis Cardinals. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy. Hello, with Chris Wheeler. Sarge will be along in just a little bit. Well, today they're honoring Shane Victorino with a beautiful T-shirt to some of the young fans who are coming to the ballpark this afternoon. Yesterday, he had four base hits for the Phillies, and the Phillies as a whole offensively, well, they were flying high against the Cards. They were, Tom. You know, that game looks, it's a little deceptive with the final score because that game was really close. The Cardinals were making unbelievable plays in the outfield. Looked like the Phillies may be in trouble, but then primetime Jimmy stepped up. And he had a grand slam home run with two outs, and that gave the Phillies the lead. And then they just started to pour it on, and Jimmy helped pour it on. Next time up, hit a double into the corner, knocked in or a run. Five runs batted in on the day for him, which was a career high in one game. And that's the kind of things Jimmy Rollins will do for you, and that he has been doing since July the 2nd. Look at the numbers for this guy with a 353 batting average. Biggest thing that jumps out at you, though, is that on-base percentage of 429. He's been knocking in runs and really has kick-started the offense. And when Jimmy Rollins is going well at the top of the order, they do score runs. And one of the great things about yesterday's Grand Slam, he had been hitless in this series before that Grand Slam and then picked up those two base hits to finish up his afternoon. Well, the Grand Slam has been a big storyline for the Phillies this year. In fact, they lead the National League not only in runs scored with the bases loaded, but those salamis as well. Well, it's nice to play small ball. You have to do that once in a while. A lot of teams can only play small ball, not this one. The Phillies do hit a lot of home runs. They have a lot of men on base. As a result, they're going to clear them with one swing of the bat like Shane Victorino did in that game in Florida in the ninth inning that helped them come back from behind and win that one. Ryan Howard, of course, he's going to hit a lot of grand slam home runs. They hit two in one game on April the 27th, Ryan Howard, and then Raul Ibanez followed with one later on in the game against Joel Hanrahan. So eight Grand Slam home runs for the Phillies this year, tying their career mark. And you have a feeling before it's over, they'll probably hit another one. This is what the Phillies have done with the bases loaded this year. They are very good with the eight Grand Slams tying the club record. But the bottom line is the reason they have a chance to hit so many Grand Slams, they have so many base runners. Yeah, and Ryan Howard with those three Grand Slams this year, he is the franchise's all-time leader in those kind of home runs, and they certainly very exciting. Well, speaking of exciting, Joe Blanton takes the baseball today. Todd Wellemeyer's on the hill for the St. Louis Cardinals. And how about Blanton? Over his last 21 and two-thirds innings, he's allowed only two earned runs. That's an ERA of under one. He'll go at it today when we come back.
show performing today's national anthem and there's Shane Victorino and t-shirts have been given out to all the young fans today compliments of IBEW local 98 on Shane Victorino hula player t-shirt day here at Citizens Bank Park it's a warm afternoon and the Phillies are trying to pick up where they left off offensively yesterday and also get another strong outing from Joe Blanton who is about ready to start his warm-up tosses out on the hill and time to kind of keep cool on a day like this any way you can and let's look at Tony La Russa's starting lineup for this afternoon leading it off at second base to Skip Schumacher Julio Lugo the shortstop is batting second Albert Pujols the first baseman hitting third Matt Holliday's over in left field he's six for nine in a Cardinals uniform he's batting cleanup Ryan Ludwig the right fielder hits fifth Rick Ann Keel the center fielder bats sixth followed by Mark DeRosa the third baseman Jason LaRue does the catching today he'll bat eighth and batting ninth at pitching is right hitter Todd Wellmeyer and they'll be facing right hitter Joe Blett making his 19th start but you know wheels over the last month or so he's been arguably one of the best pitchers in the National League he sure has time he's done a great job pitching for the Phillies commanding his fastball his stats uh, you know they don't look all that great but and with 114 hits and 110 innings but you said lately he has really been good his walks and strikeouts good all year here's our scouting report on it from Southwest Airlines in the month of July just outstanding with ERA under one and he's most effective when he can locate that fastball in the corners and then use his off-speed stuff effectively and not get in the middle of the plate with his pitches well yesterday the Phillies won 14 to 6 against the Cardinals and really exploded offensively and got six good innings from Rodrigo Lopez Time now for a key state price for JPs too. This afternoon's game, kind of muggy here. Citizens Bank Park will need Blanton to keep pitching well and cool off that Julio Lugo. And Wellemeyer is a guy who has really been hit around. The highest opponent's batting average in the National League at 320, and left handed hitters hitting him real hard. Yeah, his uh, hits per innings pitched have been really on the rise compared to last year. Joe Blanton starts out, no balls and two strikes against Skip Schumacher. Schumacher riding a 10 game hitting streak and overall hitting 305. That's how Pitts Joe has really been effective on where he starts a fastball, left hand hitter runs it back over the plate, didn't get that one. And he got Schumacher there. And the tag is applied by Baco. One away here at the top of the first today. He's a good change up. Mentioned curveball and slider, and also a changeup he'll mix in on certain games, especially with left hand hitters. You see him kind of stick it there in the palm, splits in the fingers, change up, and he chases. Well, that strikeout for Blatt is 97th of the year. He leads the Phillies staff in strikeouts. He also leads in innings pitch with 110 and two thirds. Facing now Julio Lugo, who is red hot against the Phillies. There, see the way we talk about the splits in the fingers. Well, that is how you usually can tell a changeup from the center field camera. Look at that, Lugo in five games against the Phillies this year, 12 for 18 with five RBIs. Well, this guy is a 450 lifetime hitter against the Phillies with 36 hits, 15 of them for extra bases. Amazing. He'd done a lot of that with the Rays and then a little bit with Boston and now over here with the Cardinals on a red hot weekend. Just acquired for the Boston Red Sox as Wheels just alluded to where he hit 284 with a home run and eight RBIs. He had, he had 31 hits the whole time with the Red Sox. <laughs> he has six against the Phillies this weekend. Really they're giving him the whole alley in left center field right now which means look at that look at this area out there in left center field. And where Shane Victorino is playing him. So all this open out there, and that would indicate they're going to pitch him away. Rocco set up away. A live drive toward right. Stairs isn't going to get it. That's the seventh hit in this series for Lugo. Stairs with his throw to second on one hop, and Lugo's safe. Adrian Johnson, the second base umpire, did not put himself in very good position. To make a call on a bang bang play. But Lugo has his second double of the series. And there he goes, hitting the ball the other way again. And Matt Stairs playing in right field today to give him a little more offense. Now, Tom mentions where the umpire's positioning is. 
See, it is tough to get an angle when you're behind the play like that. Now, oh, it is close. It's although it doesn't look like he beat it. Well, runner at second now with one out for Albert Pujols. Pujols is two for nine in this series overall. And he chops one toward the hole. That's a base hit to left. Lugo will stop at third. And the Cardinals have runners on first and third with one out. That's only the fourth hit this year for the for pool holes against the Phillies. They've done a nice job keeping him in the ballpark. Well, Lugo mentioned all those hits he has against the Phillies. Yet another extra base hit. It was one of the keys of the game today. Was to cool this guy off a little bit. Not working so far, Wills. Not so far. He didn't even, you know, when he hits him hard, he hits him soft. I mean, that was just a little dunker that he hit in the right field. But you have to give him credit because he made contact on a good pitch. Well, here's Matt Holliday, who's six for nine in the series. He was two for four yesterday. And he hits one in the air to straightaway center field. It'll be deep enough to score the run. Victorino's there. Two away. Pujols trying for second base. The throw is a little late. And that's not, listen, unless you can make it. It's not the, the best play by a base runner because you got the runner coming home from third. You got to make sure you're there before that throw arrives. Well, there's all kinds of things about that play. As you said, that's one of them, that's for sure. Now, Lugo runs hard because, see, he looked back and he saw pool holes tagging to go to second. So, you know, he got to make sure that he scores just in case he's out at second base. Brian Anora was kind of a doorstop for him there as he. Sealed him off as he was coming across the plate. Well, what Onura was doing there was he was getting himself in a position to make sure he could tell what happened at second base, too. Uh, you know, just in case his colleagues did. And he'll bring Ryan Ludwig to the plate. Cardinals lead it 1 0. It's only the third run given up by Blanton in his last four outings. Ludwig also on a hitting streak. Not only is he hitting six straight, he has scored a run in each of the last six games. It's good base running by Pools because he saw Victorino drifting and drifting and drifting on that ball like he was never going to be able to get behind it and get a lot on the throw. So he decided he was going to go back at first, tag up, and then see where Shane was when he caught it and he advanced. That's winning baseball when you do things like that. It may not turn out to be anything, but see if they produce another run out of it. Ludwig road RBIs 47 of his 63 runs batted in have come on the road. Or excuse me, 44 of his 63. Hmm. And it's three and one to him. Again, Keel waits on deck. He had a good day yesterday. Yeah, at the plate and in the field. Made a spectacular play. Center field take a two run home run away from Jason Worth. Blanton's first faced the uh, Cardinals two other times. He's 2 and 0 with a 1.38 ERA against him. In fact, he faced them earlier this season and he allowed just one earned run in six innings of work. The crowd finally realizes there are two outs and two strikes on Ryan Ludwig. He's trying to get behind Joe Blanton here in the first. And he hits it the opposite way on the ground. Chase has got it. And the inning is over. But the Cardinals do get a run on the sack fly by Matt Holliday. Middle of the first, and St. Louis won, and the Phillies coming up.
Leading off at shortstop, Jimmy Rollins. Shane Victorino, the center fielder, bats second. Chase Utley's at second base, hitting third. Ryan Howard is the cleanup batter. He's over at first base, followed by Raul Ibanez, the left fielder. Matt Stairs hits sixth. He's in right field. Pedro Feliz, the third base, and bats seventh. He's had a good series. Paul Bacco does the catching today, batting eighth. And batting ninth, of course, the pitching is right-hander Joe Blanton. And they're facing a guy that's scuffling this year, and Todd Wellemeyer. His 20th game, 7-8 and eight, with a 5.68 ERA. This guy used to be a relief pitcher with several teams. Had some years with the Cubs for one of them. And they turned him into a starter a couple years ago, and he was very successful early on. This year, as Tom said, he's scuffling. Look at the 133 hits along with 48 walks. That's a lot of base runners. And left-handed hitters hitting 340 against him. That's another reason why Charlie Manuel has a couple extra left-handed hitters in the lineup today. And Matt Stairs and... And uh, Paul Baca. Yeah, in fact, seven of the nine batters today for the Phillies are left-handed hitters or the two switch hitters. There's the Southwest Airlines scouting report on Wellemeyer. He is a sinker ball pitcher, really needs to keep the ball down. Left-handed hitters, we mentioned. He uh, throws a slider, curve, and changeup along with a sinking fastball. So Jimmy Rollins leaks things off. What a day Jimmy had yesterday. Career high, five RBIs. He takes one for a strike of the knees. It's 0-1. Jimmy yesterday, before that grand slam, had only three hits in his previous 38 at-bats with the bases loaded. And he stepped up big time yesterday. He had a bullet his first time up. Then it was you know, kind of been turning him over in this series. Ground balls to the right side of the infield. He got that pitch from Mott up in the air and hit it out of here. See what he's done in July compared to the other months this year. He has 10 doubles this month. Which is tied for the major league lead. Here's a grand slam. It was a fastball in. Well, he jumped all over. He didn't have far to go to get to that one. And this place erupted Oof. at that point. It was loud, wasn't it? And then Victorino followed with a home run two pitches later. Two pitches later. Well, Jimmy sends one of the air to right field. Not as deep, of course, as Ludwig is there. Well, got that, was, that right off the end of the bat. Yeah, and it was an off-speed pitch of some kind, Tom, and it got him way out in front. Either breaking ball or changeup. Tell by that swing. So Jimmy's retired, and it'll bring Shane Victorino to the plate. Victorino, enough said. Well, if you want to say anything else, you can say that he has 123 hits, 35 here in July, which is tops in the National League. He's also leading the Phillies in, in hitting with a 318 batting average. He's had a good home stand. A good home stand so far, and he was four for four yesterday with three runs scored and three RBIs. Look at that. During the seven game hitting streak, as Victorino chops one toward the middle, there it is, an eight game hitting streak. And he's around first, thought about going to second base. But during this eight game hitting streak, Victorino in the previous seven games has five multi hit games. Well, he, gets, he can get hits like that, too. I mean, Shane Victorino is a complete offensive player because he can hit the ball in the ballpark sometimes, and then he can hit these little choppers and beat them out with his speed. Now, there's nothing they're going to be able to do with that. Schumacher, even if he's able to catch it, was going to be a hit. And a nice job by Rick Ankiel to come busting in from center field. Victorino took a big turn at first, and he was going to take that extra base if they were slow getting to it. One out now. Chase Utley is the batter. Chase hitting 299. He's just three for 23 with five strikeouts on this homestand. And one for seven in the series. He doubled yesterday. And he takes one inside. Wellemeyer had like a little kick there uh, in his delivery. Whether or not that's to hold runners or whether that's just the way he's comfortable. And they'll size him up at first and see if they can run on him. Victorino goes, pitch is taken inside, LaRue has no chance. Chase Ryan and Orr, I think, is uh, called time. And he's saying that Chase may have interfered with Jason LaRue. Hmm. So they're going to send Victorino back to first. Can't tell if he said that he called time or if Chase got in the way of 
of Jason LaRue's throw. They had no chance of getting him at second base. Whatever it is, Charlie accepted it. I think Anora is saying that he got in the way of Jason LaRue. Yeah, because he's pointing at himself. He, he must LaRue must have come back and as he went to throw hit the umpire and the ball flipped out of his hand. Yeah, that's what happened. There you go. That's what you see in LaRue saying, wait, or Anora saying, that's my fault. The sad part about that is he's got no chance to he throw no him shot. out. None. Well, it's 2 and 0 oh to Chase Utley. Shane doesn't go this time, and Chase rips it to right field. That's a base hit. Ludwig cuts it off, but Victorino's going to get to third. Phillies have runners on first and third with one away. And that interference by Anora is huge because obviously Shane would have scored very easily on that ball to right field. Yeah, and a lot of outfielders, that's a double, but these guys play so deep. That's why they were able to make a lot of those plays they made yesterday on the potential extra base hits. We talked about it on Friday night, how deep their outfielders are. And that was an example there how Ludwig was able to cut that off because that looked like a double off the bat and would be many other days. So the Phillies with runners out first and third. The Cardinals will set their defense in a traditional manner against Ryan Howard. Right, and very, very deep with their outfielders, but they play almost everybody this way. Ryan with 12 strikeouts and 25 at bats on this homestand. And he takes one for a strike there. Well, the umpires for today's game Brian Onora is the home plate umpire. The crew chief is Gary Cedarstrom at first. Adrian Johnson at second and Jim Wolf is over at third base. Chase thought about going on that pitch. He stopped as he jumped off the base path. And it's one and one to Ryan. It's really unusual to see team play this kind of defense of Ryan Howard. As Tom mentioned, a shortstop normal position. The outfielders are real deep. And normally you're going to have three guys on the right side, even with a runner at first base. Well, look where Ludwig is in right field. He's yeah. only a few steps from the warning track. Well, that's why he was able to just cut that ball off that Utley hit. In the air to center field. That'll get the run home, and Keel settles under it. Victorino tags. Watch this arm. The ball is cut off uh, by Pujols. Up to second goes Utley. Victorino scores, and it's a 1 1 game. Utley, good base run in there, too. He waited to see whether Ann Keel was going to throw that ball in the middle of the diamond, and whether anybody was going to be able to cut it off before it got to the middle of the diamond. It was not cut off. And he, got, he gets a second base. If someone was going to cut that off, or he was going to throw directly to second where he should have, he can't go to second base. So that's really good base running by both Poolholes and uh, Utley in this inning to tag and go from first to second. You don't see that often, let alone two in one game already. And I thought Akil was going to try to airmail it to the plate because it looked like he was setting up to fire. Yeah, and he has no shot at him. He has to throw that ball towards second base, really. Sack fly for Howard. The RBI is the 73rd of the year. Good job by Ryan to get the run in. And now see if the Phillies can take advantage of the good base running by a player the way the, the Cardinals, of course, did. Raul yesterday was two for five with a run scored in an RBI. And the count one ball and one strike to him. with 46 RBIs with runners in scoring position. Overall, he has 71 on the season. Playing him to left center. Tries to hold up. And he did not, says Brian Onora. They have Ludwig way, way off the line in right field and giving him basically the right field area to pull the ball. You see that their defense and they're figuring that he's less likely to hit a ball towards the line than to hit a ball in the gap in right center field. So they're going to take that away from him.
Mullins as well. Myers eighth appearance against the Phillies. His fourth start overall. He's 0 and 1 with a 6.35 ERA. Phillies did not see him in St. Louis earlier this season. At this point, he has to be considered their fifth starter. Gets Ibanez on strikes, so the inning is over. So the Phillies set up for one on the sack fly by Ryan Howard. We played one. Game tied at one. During the 2009 season, Turkey Hill will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory and five cents for each carton of Phillies Grand Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. I bought some Grand Slam ice cream yesterday, Wheels. What flavor? Grand Slam. Oh, oh, that's, that's the, flavor. the flavor. Oh, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> correct. I got you. I bought some uh, chocolate peanut butter cup, too. Well, I would think that anything you would buy must include peanut butter. So that's why I was a little confused. Is the Turkey Hill Grand Slam, that great Turkey Hill ice cream in the press room. Rick Ankeel leads things off, and he drills one foul. That's a little, little bit something called party cake today. I saw that. It was very yesterday. good. Like, I saw that yesterday. Like a party cake. Mm -hmm. It's very they, colorful. They have good stuff. And Keels had a good offensive series. He loops that one towards second base. A diving grab <laughs> on the adjustment by Chase Utley. Oh, man. Well, he read that to his left, obviously. It was going to be a, a line drive pulled in the hole, and it was a clunker that started to slice. <laughs> they all want to see it. His teammates are getting a kick out of this one. Here he goes. Now watch him. You see, he reads that as a ball in the hole, and then wait a minute. It's not going anywhere near the hole. <laughs> I better get over. And what that is is an infielder. They do that. You'll see them move sometimes before the ball's hit because they anticipate where the pitch is. Like that pitch was inside to Ankeel, but he's somehow inside out of it and hit a slice. When it looked like where that pitch was, he was going to yank it in the hole. <laughs> Well, Victorino on the shot, uh, the initial shot, he took a step also to his left. Well, sure. He has a different view out in center field. Right, in the infield, you know, the, you know, if you play the infield, you see pitch in a certain spot, and you move that way a little bit. Before the guys, as a guy's swinging, because you anticipate where it's going to go. That one didn't go anywhere near where he thought it was going to go. Thankfully, he was still able to get to it. Two and two, the count to Mark DeRosa. DeRosa hitting 216 with the Cardinals. He had 270 in the American League this year. And it's three and two. He had 13 homers and 50 RBIs for the Indians. Good solid player, boy. A lot of people in the Cubs think they really miss him. He's down on strikes, two away. Second it, strikeout for Blanton. Yeah, there's Blanton, Tom, with that breaking ball. When he gets ahead of right handed hitters, slider especially, sometimes curve. 
Well, the Phillies begin play today. Six and a half games up for the National League East over the Braves and the Florida Marlins. The Florida Marlins will be here on the 7th of August to start a three-game series. It's a very busy weekend. It wraps up at 135 on Sunday the 9th with the Pico Ryan Howard kids cap. Seats are limited throughout the weekend. For tickets, you can log on to phillies.com. The alumni batting challenge will take place that weekend. The Gary Maddox rib off will take place that weekend as well. And of course, the Wall of Fame night. And HK will be inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame on Friday night. Big week. 0 oh, 2 the count to LaRue, who's playing for Yadier Molina this afternoon. LaRue hitting 246. He has a home run and three RBIs. And he's got an old school must mustache, too. Well, this guy caught a lot of years for the Reds. Was their number one guy. Uh, he was a real project of uh, Bob Boone's when Booney was the manager over there. That kind of looks like a goose gossage. Sure does. Speaking of Hall of Fame day. That one didn't sound that great. A bouncer to J Roll on a nice backhanded play. The inning is over. One, two, three, go the Cardinals here at the top of the second. Nice bounce back getting by Joe Blanton as we head to the home second. On my PHL 17. Well, everybody enjoying this afternoon's ball game. Even if you don't have a seat, there's always a spot for you. <laughs> it's a one one game as we go to the bottom of the second. I'll tell you, this place was a buzz yesterday during that inning when the Phillies scored the five runs. And even when Rick Ann Keel made the over the fence grab on the ball that Jason Worth hit. I mean the fans were into it and into the entire game and I, I was very impressed by the Phillies fans applauding and Keel for his effort on both of the defensive plays he made yesterday. Great play. Well, we mentioned how deep these guys play so they're able to make those kind of plays because they don't have far to go to the wall and Keel that was just a great play. That would have been a, a tough play for a guy like say a Victorino as good as Shane is. He plays so much more shallow that ball was hit on a line. He would have probably not been able to get to the wall in time to get to that. See how deep he is. And that's really where he was yesterday when mm -hmm. Worth was up at the plate. He might have been over towards center a little bit more. Well, that's obviously their philosophy is that they don't mind the ball in front of them. They don't want it over their heads or in the alleys as much. And uh, I don't think pitchers like that. But, uh, you know, that's the way they want to set their defense. Most pitchers you talk to, they like those outfielders in. One and two, the count to Matt Stairs, making his fifth start of the year. You see how deep Ann Keel is playing in center field. Two at two. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contested is Michael McTaggart of Wilmington, Delaware. If the Phillies hit a home run in today's ball game, Michael will win $200.
Charlie wanted to give Matt Stairs a, a chance to get a few at bats today and uh, give Jason Worth a day off. And with the numbers that uh, Wellemeyer has against left handed hitters, it all just kind of set itself up. And Matt has had two pinch hit appearances in the series. He's 0 for 2. Well, he's been struggling a little bit as a pinch hitter. He really is not getting good swings. So Charlie likes to get them some at bats when he can. Chopper toward first. And Pulholz makes the play. What a way. Here's that catch by Rick Ankeel on the ball to Jason Worth it. Yep, see, there he goes. He didn't have a whole lot of distance to go, and he got to the wall, put his hand back. Great athletic play by Rick Ankeel. And then fired it back in. And you know, the Phillies were getting, they could have had like seven runs early in that game, except for outfield play. Uh, there's Jason Worth. The outfield play by the by the Cardinals, and that's why that game was starting to look a little bit scary, and then they just blew it open. Pedro Feliz is now the batter. Pedro riding a six game hitting streak. And the count no balls and one strike to him. Broke his bat toward the hole. Diving play by DeRosa. And he airmails that throw. And police is aboard. See Ankiel right here. Got a great jump on that ball because he was pretty deep when he started and then goes back and pulls it back in. And that's one of the best catches you'll see. And the other thing when you think about it is the courage that guy has to go after a ball, knowing the walls, fences are around after what happened to him in that game in St. Louis against the Phillies. You really have to give him a lot of credit for that. Well, and he glanced back to see where he was, too, and still was athletic enough to be able to to find the baseball. Well, he only had one shot to look because that thing was hit low. One out for Paul Bacco. Bacco is four for six against Todd Wellemeyer in his career. Probably caught him some when the two were with the Chicago Cubs. Pedro, Pedro Feliz with a base hit on that play. Um, you know, that's one of those ones that could have scored it either way. And, uh, you know, it's, that's, that's a base hit. You know, it's a tough play after he caught it. Then he had to pop up and throw it. And he just. Didn't even come close to throwing it accurately. So that's a seven game hitting streak for Feliz. And I went to the count to Baca. Out on the scoreboard, they have all the players in Hawaiian shirts today. <laughs> so pretty good. And Baco looks like he's wearing a, a Hawaiian shirt from the University of Hawaii. Yeah. Well, it is the Shane Victorino Hawaiian shirt day. And the count holds 0 2. This is Baco's ninth start of the season since assuming the role of the Phillies backup catcher to Carlos Ruiz. Nice little situation now, too. They have a right handed hitting catcher and a left handed hitting catcher. There's Carlos. A long day yesterday. He did a pretty good job yesterday, too, offensively. Bach goes down on strikes two away. Second strikeout for Wellemeyer. <laughs> Joe Bland's got one hit this season. He's one for 28. So he's due. As he digs in with a runner at first and two outs in the bottom of the second inning. Yeah, but he can always say he hit a World Series homer. I huh? sure can. The thing he does do really well is sacrifice. You know, obviously not a sacrifice situation now, but uh, when they need him to get a bunt down, he's good at that. Sun's back at it. It is steamy. <laughs> See Joe's Hawaiian shirt, little yeah. yellow touched into his. Yeah, there's some good ones they've been putting up. With the sunset in the background is pretty. He 
He's off two balls and two strikes to him. You want to make pitchers throw as many pitches a day as possible unless it's your guy. And lands down on strike, so the inning is over. Three strikeouts now for Wellemeyer. Phil Strand one. We have completed our first two here in Philadelphia, and it's a 1 1 game. For all the information, and please submit your answer on the subject line. The question is, who are the two Baseball Hall of Famers that have played for both the Phillies and the Cardinals? The answer will be revealed in the seventh inning. And speaking of the Hall of Fame, going in today will be, well, one of a kind. Ricky Henderson, ten-time All-Star, all-time stolen base leader in baseball history, and then Jim Rice, who waited a long time to get his induction into the Hall of Fame. He's an eight time all star with one thousand four hundred and fifty one career RBI played his entire career with the Boston Red Sox. And he'll go in today. Tony Kubek will go in. That's really the nice. Broadcasters wing. That's great for Tony to Kubek. I mean two great players there in Rice and and uh, Ricky Anderson of course Tony Kubek. Guy we used to see a lot of uh, back when he and Joe Garagiola used to do the game of the week, and Phillies were good back in those days, and they used to come to Philadelphia a lot. Got to know Tony real well in those days, and he was a great guy to sit around and talk baseball with. So congratulations to Tony. The other person who will go in today, another player, will be Joe Gordon, yeah. former New York Yankee, who uh, before Dan Ugla hit his 100th home run, he was the fastest to 100 home runs by a second baseman in baseball history. Olivier is retired on the grounder to Jimmy Rollins to start the third. And then we go back to the top of the order. So Joe Blanton now has retired six straight. Since a single by Albert Pujols. Schumacher got in that box way too fast for a leadoff hitter on a hot day like this. Now he finally stepped out when he saw Wellemeyer running across the diamond. I really want to give that pitcher time to get back to the to the dugout, sit down a little bit, uh, anyway, let alone on a day like this. A lot of folks wondered what Schumacher's playing time would look like now that the Red Sox had acquired, or excuse me, the Cardinals had acquired Julio Lugo from the Red Sox. Looks like he's going to play a lot of times against right-handers, and then. You know, depending on how hot Lugo is, he'll play all the time at second or short. Yeah. And Brendan Ryan will switch and play a little bit as Victorino turns his back to the infield as he finds a spot and makes the grab. You usually don't see a guy turn all the way around like that. But Shane figured he had a good beat on it from right from the get go. And when he looked up, there it was. So two outs. And when you can't follow the Phillies on my PHL 17, 
You can follow the action on your iPhone and iPod Touch with MLB.com at bat2009. Visit Phillies.com on your iPhone or iPod Touch to purchase today. Two outs. Here's Lugo. Get this guy out. <laughs> Seven for 11 in the series. Amazing. Then they go moving way over to right center on him again. He doubled and scored the first run of the day. Look at how much room they're trying to take away over there and give him left center field. Lugo walks away because he just got a fastball right down the middle. You can see when a hitter does that, it's like, oh man, how'd I take that? On the hands of Looper, leaping grab by Chase Utley. He read that one perfectly. One, two, three. Go the Cardinals. The middle play was a dandy. Shane Victorino. We head to the bottom of the third. By WB Mason. Who but WB Mason for amazingly low office product prices? And buy your local Chevy dealers. Last of the third here at Citizens Bank Park in a 1 1 game. Final game of this three game series and the final game of this homestand for the Phillies. Todd Wellemeyer so far has allowed two hits, or excuse me, three hits in the first two innings of work. And he will face the top of the order. And let's see what the top of the order is able to do. Against Wellemeyer the second time through. Phillies began play today as we mentioned six and a half games up in the National League East. Over the Atlanta Braves who lost to the Brewers last night. And the Florida Marlins who lost to the Los Angeles Dodgers last night. Walk off bloop single two outs by Casey Blake. At the bottom of the ninth inning. Jimmy Rollins flying out to right his first time up. And he pops the first pitch foul. Yeah, the Brewers finally got a solid pitching performance yesterday. They shut the Braves out. That guy Yarno is good. Watch uh, that game last night. And boy, he, boy, he has good stuff. Remember we saw him a few years ago in a game against the Phillies, and you just thought, well, this guy has a chance to be a good one. Yesterday, Rodrigo Lopez, I thought he really battled. He battled not only this Cardinals lineup, Jim Wolf, the whole plate umpire to a certain extent, as that one's hit in the air to center field. Easy play for Ann Keel. And Lopez has now pitched his way to a 3 0 record. And the Phillies are 4 0 in his four starts. So yesterday, he scattered 10 hits and four runs over six innings. Yeah, they've won all four games that he started. So, yeah, he's done a good job. You know, that. You need those kind of guys in the course of a long season to somehow fit in, fill in like that, and he's done the job. When you think about what Lopez has done. He's 3-0 this year. 
what Hap has done. He's seven and one this year. I mean, the two of them combined for ten victories. Yeah, and you look at the at the team's record a lot of times when they start games and how they do. And uh, you know, like the Phillies, I think they're well, they're above 500 too when Joe Bland pitches. So that's the whole thing about it is, you know, how your team performs when you're on the mound a lot of times. One of the reasons why those guys have been successful is because of this offense. And Victorino's a big part of it, as you saw there. Had a base hit his first time up. And tied this game up at one apiece. And Shane's got another hit. And he is smoking hot. Yeah, that, that was a changeup too, and you can see he got out front, but still kept his hands back pretty well. Can't, don't know Shane for president. See if he caught too much of the plate with it. Yeah, that, see, that's why he was able to get out front the way that he did and still hook it and hit it hard in the hole because it caught a lot of the plate. Well, Shane is now eight for his last nine. That's how. Toward a pace he's been on. And he's six for his last six. So he's bored with one out for Chase Utley. This combination last time up, Victorino ran, had second base stolen, then there was umpire interference that Honora called on himself, and he had to go back to first. He wound up scoring anyway. Stolen 16 bases this year. Here's that interference. Now watch when the catcher LaRue goes back to throw. He has, he hits him right in the mask with his elbow. And uh, that caused him to drop the ball right in front of him. But the bottom line was he would have been safe anyway at second. It's a good call by O'Norm. I mean, he had a call on himself. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, Derek Lowe and the Braves lead the Brewers 1 0 in the bottom of the first inning. Brian McCann and RBI double. Braden Looper pitching in that one for the Brewers. Brewers began play today in fourth place, two and a half games back behind the Cardinals. That's because the Houston Astros have found their way to third place in the division. Red hot. They get blasted last night by a rare Mets offensive explosion. But the Astros have really been hot. Just yeah. a game and a half out. Look how close that thing is. That division is. Wow. Cubs are half a game out with all their problems. I mean, the Reds are only five back in the loss column. Even though you don't think they're going to be, uh, you know, they're going to win the division. But, you know, you see yourself five back in the loss column at the end of July. Well, we're still hanging around. Oh, well, people wonder about the trade deadline too. On July 31st, that's one of the reasons why there's. I mean, it seems to be somewhat quiet, with the exception of the holiday deal and maybe some other minor deals. Pitch out, throw behind. Well, that, you don't see a whole lot of one-one pitch outs. You certainly don't see two ones. Uh, but uh, even one-one, they just thought they smelled something. So one-one's not a bad time to pitch out. Well, if your guy has good control. Well, you know what the, what the point is. You don't want you don't want your pitcher get behind in the count too much. You know, if you guess wrong, and in this case they guess wrong, go to two one. That's why you rarely pitch out two one because then you go to three one if you're wrong. And it is three and one. Marino really started to go then, and then just stopped. It's a whole matter of trusting what you think you see or what Davy Lopes sees, and then go. Second base. Well, they, they know that he he was going the last time. Slight flinch there, but uh, not not that. Much. 
Now a good time to run. Even though Utley's struggling a little bit right now. Take your chances that even if he swings through one that Victorino. If it's a breaking ball or something a little off speed can still get the second push. He doesn't get a real good jump here because you're running on the count. You're not trying to steal the bag. Three and two the count. Victorino goes and the pitch is high in the air deep to right field. Ludwig going back and that one is gone. Two run home run for Chase Utley. His 22nd of the year and the Phillies lead it three to one. He went down and he got that one. Left-handed hitters against Wellemeyer. He struggles. And they got a lot of them in that lineup today, and two of them just burning. Here it is, a 3-2 fastball, right down the middle, low. The way a left-handed hitter likes it, and he hit it way out to right. And Michael McTaggart of Wellington, you've just won $200, courtesy of the McDonald's home run jackpot. Here's Ryan Howard with the Phillies leading it 3-1. to one. Ryan a little out in front and the count no balls in one strike. Well he's trying to go back to back and hit a fastball a mile and he got a slider. Yeah, yesterday Victorino after the home run by Jimmy Rollins got a fastball and he hit it a mile. And he pulls that one for a base hit to right field. Little looper right over the head of Skip Schumacher. And the Phillies now with six hits. And there's Chase who now has three hits in his last three at bats. Counting the double he had yesterday. Matter That's of great time. Side. Yeah, matter of time. You know he's in a little bit of a funk, and he'll come out of it. Oh, went down on strikes. His only time up. He's 0 for one. Well, the threat of speed can really help you at the top of your work. Produce more, and they kept throwing over to first, worrying about Victorino stealing second base. Eventually, Wellemeyer goes to 3 2, has to throw a fat, well, did throw a fastball. You get two runs out of it. That's why guys love speed on the bases. Little roller to first. Pulls has it for one, the throw to second. That's an easy 3 6 double play. So the inning is over, but Jay Sutley gives the Phillies the lead. A two run bomb. Second end of the day. And the Phillies lead it 3 to 1. The Arizona Diamondbacks, all three games. But there are seats still available for the 18th and the 20th. The 20th is a fanatic value date and also be a celebration before and during the game, a Jewish heritage celebration. You can log on to Phillies.com to make your purchase. And speaking of the Phillies and the Diamondbacks, that's where the Phillies will head after this ball game. 
There are the pitching matchups. Get Garland and Heron in the first two games. Those are two tough games. Yusmero Petit will be opposed by Jay Happ on Wednesday. The Phillies have had a lot of success out in Arizona. I think we have the all time series 42 to 37. And as we go to the top of the fourth inning, Albert Pools leads things off as Gary Matthews joins us. And Blanton delivers a strike in the count is 0 1. Pools chopped a single left side his first time up. Matt Stairs comes chugging in to make the grab. Grab number one here in the fourth inning. You know, Sarge, Pools has a couple hits in this series, three in this series, but for the most part, the Phillies staff has done a very nice job against him. Yeah, we talked with him today and about his hitting, and he was saying he was through, going through the ball, but he thought he was a little bit quick, which means then that he has quick feet. That just a little bit slow, but it doesn't take him a long time to get out of it. Now, Sarge is in the spirit of the Shane Victorino celebration here at the ballpark with his very patriotic lay that he's got around his neck. and. He's got a new hat. I don't know if anybody knows this, but that is an environmentally friendly hat you're telling me, right? Growing green just like Citizens Bank there, Tom. <laughs> okay. Hat is made out of bamboo. Looks sharp. Thank matches, you. Matches your outfit. Well, it really comes together nicely, too. I didn't even know that. I just picked something out of the closet there to get, and it <laughs> accidentally it really matched. I, thanks a lot, though. Yeah, nobody out there is buying that. Count is one ball and one strike to Matt Holiday. Sack fly is only time up. And it's one and two. Holiday is six for nine in the series. He had a sack fly his last time up, which means he's now got 58 RBIs overall, 59 RBIs overall. Talk with Hal McCray earlier today, a hitting coach there for St. Louis, and we talked about how. He likes being on the field, likes being under fire, he says. The pressure of being able to get the guys hit. And also talked about working for Tony, and it's good to work for a manager that has longevity. Therefore, you're able to be there as long as, as he is. See some of those averages there. And there's ball four, and Holiday draws a walk. Well, you've been a, a coach before, Sarge, and you know Tony has been very loyal to... Oh, the yeah. staff that he has, whether it be Dave McKay, his first base coach, or Jose Okendo, his third base coach, or Dave Duncan, his pitching coach. I mean, as a hitting coach, you could take some chances if oh. you know that there's some stability. No, there's no doubt about it. And he talked about Tony letting him do his job. Roller toward third, backhanded by Feliz. Could be two. It will be two. Around the horn, a 5 4 3 double play. Joe Blanton's loving it. As his defense picks him up here at the top of the fourth inning. All began with Pedro Feliz following a right into his glove. An easy exchange for Elton.
a juicy 100% Angus beef. Available with premium toppings in three varieties for just $3.99. McDonald's, I'm loving it. By Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag, it's on. By AT&T, your world delivered. And by the Pennsylvania Lottery. Benefits older Pennsylvanians every day. You must be 18 or older to play. Please play responsibly. Home half of the fourth in front of a sold-out crowd. Phillies and the Cardinals wrap up this three-game series. Matt Stairs, who grounded out to Pujols his first time up, will lead things off. I actually swung right through that off-speed pitch. Matt usually likes it a bit. That's that one in the air to center field, not deep at all. And Keel, he got a good jump. One away. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Mets uh, trail the Astros three to nothing at the top of the second inning. Miguel Tejada, a double, an RBI, and a run scored. Much of those Astros in third place in the National League Central. They are playing some really good baseball. Yeah, Tejada doesn't have the, the numbers as far as in home runs, but he's still getting a lot of line drives and driving in runs. He's among the league leaders and hits overall and batting average. As Pedro Feliz takes one low. Pedro reached on an infield base at his first time up. Smokes one right into center field. Boy, I gotta tell you, this guy's just having a solid year over at third base. Line drives up the middle, line drives the other way. He's been on the ball for the most part, not swinging and missing, and then hitting breaking balls. That's a good job. His average is near 300 now with that base hit. And he's on first for Paul Bacco as he's having a conversation with Albert Pujols over at first. Bacco struck out his first time up. Well, Meyer used to throw the ball a lot harder than this. Came into the league, was with the Cubs, throwing the ball upwards. 96, 97, has some of the bigger shoulders you'll see. I used to always tease him and ask him if he had a hanger in the back of his uh, <laughs> uniform. Well, it's ripped to right field. Ludwig going back. He's not going to get it. It's off the top of the wall. It knocks something off that scoreboard. Feliz is going to pull it to third. Baco to second. It's a one-out double. The Phillies have runners on second and third. It knocked the bottle. Somebody must have just dropped that as the ball hit the top of that scoreboard. Well, he hit that in the line drive going high off that scoreboard. Baco getting the head out. You see that ball as it just hits up against that wall there. Ludwig turning around knowing that he couldn't get the ball. Yeah, just the, fell on the ground there. Yeah, the water bottle fell out of the stands. Ryan Ludwig took care of that. Here's Blanton with the infield in halfway and one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. Yeah, it should not be a situation where you're going on contact. He does bounce it toward the hole at shortstop. Lugo pumps a couple of times and he gets Blanton at first. Two away. Blanton hit the ball pretty good. Fast ball running inside on him, jammed him a little bit. You notice how Lugo though looked over at third base at Feliz just to make sure he wasn't going. Jimmy's popped out twice. Once to right, once to center.
eight hits in his last 20 at bats including the Grand Slam yesterday. And Sarge he had been hitless in the series before that Grand Slam and I thought it was pretty good not only that he gave the Phillies the lead but also for his own psyche that he was able to get that Grand Slam after being hitless in the series. Yeah it took a first pitch fastball next fastball out of the ballpark. Want to make sure, however, when you're striding, that your hands are going back. His hands were actually going forward. You know, when they go forward, you can't have as much on the ball when you hit it. And that is your low position, so your bat should be going back, soft feet going through. He's out in front of that one. He pops it up. LaRue up the third base line and gives way to DeRosa. Nearly collided. And the inning is over. So the Phillies strad two in scoring position. We head to the fifth of the three-one game. If you are a fan of these my PHL 17 shows, you got to check out the action adventure drama Legend of the Secret tonight at eight, followed by Law and Order SVU at nine on my PHL 17. Now, top of the fifth inning, there's Jamie Moyer. Jamie will get the start tomorrow in Arizona. You figure at this time of the year, the roof's going to be closed. So, you know, Jamie with 255 wins for his career will go after. Win number 256 with the roof closed and the air conditioner on tomorrow in Phoenix. Good, because it's supposed to be right about 105 or a little bit higher. First pitch is scheduled for 940 Eastern time as Rick Ann Keel takes one for strike one. If you're going to do your walking, suggest you do it earlier. Take a bottle of water or two. Thanks for looking out for everybody, Sarge. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to talk to a few people there already. I'm and plans of being on the golf course. So I'm just word to the wise. The athlete that you are, you can take the heat. <laughs> Wanted to the count to Rick Akio. Well, it really does get uh, hot there. I played my triple A ball there. There's a different type of. Uh, trying to there. keep cool. That's all you're trying to do, Sarge. Just trying to keep cool. Click. Yesterday was a photo day here at the ballpark. And, you know, with players and. Well, folks went around meeting greeting getting their picture taken as Ann Keel skies one to right. That stairs shading his eyes from the sun. Makes the grab. And that's where you get the full effect of how warm it was. Here at the ballpark. Oh boy. And here are the temperatures if you're planning on going following the Phillies to Arizona and San Francisco. What a switch. 113 113 and 108. And then the San Francisco where the temperature is not going to get into the mid 60s. Right. And, and you do. You have to bring a lot of different clothes. Oh, DeRosa gets into one there to right field. It's deep stairs going back. That one is gone. 
into the first row of seats in right center field. And DeRosa's made this a one run game. Man, did that thing carry. The ball has been carrying to right center. You get that ball up in that area. They seem to keep going, going, going for a right hander. DeRosa to hit that ball. You got to have good mechanics to drive that out. See exactly where he is. Slow feet. Boy, just compact swing, and he just hit the ball exactly where it was pitched. Not all that bad of a pitch. A little bit up. DeRosa up to the task. His fourth home run in a Cards uniform. Jason LaRue is the batter. Well, he's a better hitter than what he showed for sure. And before it's all said and done, he's going to make the St. Louis fans pretty happy. Good pitch. DeRose out of the University of Pennsylvania, where he was a two sports star. A really good football player. He was a quarterback. Had to give up his final year of eligibility playing football. As he signed with the Braves. Two players have played football and quarterback and pretty good athletes. Todd Helton there with Colorado Rockies. He was a quarterback. Root chops one softly to third. And Pedro boots it. It's going to have to be an error because yeah. Root has not run that well. And the ninth error of the season for Pedro. San Francisco Giants will return the favor of the Phillies trip next weekend to AT&T Park. They'll be in town Tuesday, September 1st for a three-game series. All three games are at 7.05. It's the final week before Labor Day. If you want to get your tickets, do it now by logging on to phillies.com. Here's Wellemeyer. He's already showing bunt. He's trying to draw Phillies in. And Tony, don't, he won't always butt. He'll butt maybe once. He might put on the hit and run, especially if he thinks his pitcher can handle the bat. We also have Blanton, who throws a lot of strikes, and that's how he determines whether or not he would do that. Wallemeyer's a career 138 hitter. He bunts at it, and it's foul, and it's 0 1. Tony LaRusso has been known to put his pitcher. It's let's say Chris Carpenter, Jason Marquis, Adam Wainwright put his pitcher in the number eight spot in the order. Not today though. And that ball gets away from Baco. So the sacrifice is not even necessary to get LaRue up to second. And the count one and one. That's the third wild pitch of the season for Joe Blanton. Oh, Baco's probably going to go out and talk with them, and usually when they do, they're crossing him up. Well, he just boxed that ball right up. A lot of times, the catcher is crossed up, and he's going to go out. But in that situation, though, nobody was at second base, so there should not be a problem. They don't usually change the sequences or what they've been doing if the runner's not on second base. Punches it the opposite way. It's going to get the runner over to third. Two away here in the top of the fifth inning. So the Ruse on third base. Wellemeyer is retired. And then we'll head back to the top of the order. And Skip Schumacher is already in the batter's box. Uh, he gets there pretty quick. He's a fastball uh, hitter. First pitch fastball hitter. Struck out his first time up, fly to center his last time to the plate. And he pulls that one softly right side. Smothered by Howard, flips over to Blanton in time for the final out. So the Cardinals strand a runner on third. They do get a run on the home run by DeRosa. Middle of the fifth, Shane Victorino to lead things off.
Yesterday was a very entertaining game, but there was some pause late in the ball game. Somebody over the first base dugout had a green laser that they were flashing in the eyes of some of the Cardinals players. You can see it popping up right there. That's a great shot. And security came over there trying to figure out who it was that was flicking the laser. Jim Wolf, Charlie Manuel, Davey Lopes. They're all conferring. Yeah. They and they never did find out who it was. And then later on, Mark DeRosa even had a flicker of green. Splashed along his jersey as well. It's not a safe thing to do. No, not at all. And that came really from the top because when you're shooting that particular kind of a laser, the further away you are, the bigger the pattern is going to be. So if you're up closer, then that pattern is going to be a lot, lot smaller. So that wasn't even in the section that they were looking at. Well, we've we've seen that, you know, over the years at games, whether it be right. baseball games or you know, even football games where somebody you know, comes in with a laser and pops it around like that. But that, that's, that could be awfully oh, dangerous. Especially if the ball is coming and it goes in your eye. Well, here's Shane Victorino. who was single twice and scored two runs for the Phillies. Did you ever have that happen as a player, though? No. I don't think they had that. I was going to say technology Tom, probably wasn't much. there. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you joking around here? No, no, no. It came out and I didn't mean it. <laughs> It came out, and as it was coming out, I was trying to grab it and say, you know, he's too old for that. Yeah, I mean, you know. I've been called a legend before, but not ancient legend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Victorino. 125 hits, second to oh, Miguel Tejada. He's got a chance to get 200 hits, and I tell you what a, an accomplishment that would be. He breaks his bat, and it's a pop up left side. And he's retired for the first time this afternoon. So, one out here in the fifth. That bat had a lot of hits in it this weekend. Shane's probably thinking, Boy. man, I wish I could have used it for a few more days. Yeah, you try and get one just like it. You know, have a few of them lined up that are kind of similar. Just in the event that you end up breaking that. But you, you're right about that. Having that bat getting hits, psychologically, you really feel bad when that is broken. You like for it, though, to die a hero, meaning that it does get another hit if it's going to crack. Here's Chase Utley. He's two for two today. Home run is last time up. Sarge, you remember how long did you see Utley in the third inning? Yeah, he got him on 3-1, a fastball up. This one down as he jumps in the Cadillac, slowing it down. I tell you, throw him those fastballs, and you got to do that. Victorino on the base if you want to try and get him if he's running. I was about to say, Sarge, remember the yeah. longest you may have gone with the, the same bat? Well, maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. A couple of weeks or so. You can always tell, too, again, when you look at the hitters up today, because that pine tar will be really caked on the bat. The ones that are really kind of new haven't been new using those bats quite as much. One and two, the count to chase. And if they're really brand new, it means that you haven't been hitting at all. You do want to see some mix on the bat. Said there's no scuffs at all. Oh well, you gotta you gotta have it, and you don't want them toward the end. If you look at a hitter's bat, you got a lot of scuff marks on the end. Simple. He's been pulling off the ball. Been there, done that. Chase has got some good marks from today, and even the last step back yesterday. Because he has three hits in his last three times at the plate. And very seldom does Chase actually. Look back there at the umpire or say anything. Well, for the most part, none of the guys really say a lot to the umpires on bad pitches that they called. And the count remains two balls and two strikes. And Sam Arnone's going to have to do a little traveling to pick up that ball for a fan.
Well, Chase has climbed back to work with the count in his favor, three and two after falling behind 0 and two. Well, Meyer tried to run that fastball back, which is a two seamer that runs back across the plate. It's interesting, though. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Greg Maddox made that pitch famous. Chase pulls one. He's got a three hit day. Two singles and a home run for Utley. He's aboard with one out. And I think whatever was plaguing him in the early part of this homestand, it's not plaguing him anymore. That's his ninth three hit game of the season. But I tell you, when you're right around that 300 mark and you go 301, 302, take it over and you go back down, puts a little bit of pressure on you to hit that 300. But getting three hits a day got him over the hump. It also gives Ryan Howard a chance to bat with a runner on in a 3 2 game. Ryan's got a sack fly. He singled his last time up, which means he's hit in all 13 games that he has played in against the Cardinals. It's one of the reasons sometimes I think he should be a little bit closer to the plate. Some of the balls that he reaches for on the outside part of the plate, he'll hit them on the in or not catch them the way that he should. They're going to still pitch him inside no matter what and away. Just makes it a little bit easier. Doesn't guarantee your hits, but it makes it easier to maximize your ability. That's exactly the pitch I'm talking about. If you're a little bit closer. Might have a tendency to really drive that ball. And right there, he's reaching for the ball a little bit. And watch how he reaches. His hips are already cleared. That ball on the outside part of the plate. Swinging at that as if the ball's on the inside when you clear your hips. Now, is he this far away from the plate, Sarge, because he, he wants to well, he, he turn feels, on the inside pitch? He, he feels comfortable okay. in where he is. And, you know, the guys of the day are more creatures of habit as opposed to trying to make that adjustment and move up or move in. And Ryan has reached base safely in 17 consecutive games. Ryan Ludwig has the longest active streak in the NL. There's Ryan. In the oh. air to straightaway center field. Watch this one. That one is long gone off the wall. A two run monster home run for Ryan Howard. And the Phillies are back on top by three. It's five to two, Philadelphia. Well, I got to think that pitch without even looking at it as he comes around home plate. They have been more middle, middle in than away. 14th career home run against the Cardinals, as you can see. You know, and from his position, you throw him a ball and make a mistake. You know, when he's hot, the balls go out of the ballpark. Slow feet, extension on that one all the way. Let's take a look there as it hits off the center field wall, taking down some Ivy. As a fielder, you don't want to be too close to that wall when that ball comes off of it. You catch that right in the head, no smiles. From Ryan Howard as he drives that ball out of the ballpark. 75 RBIs now for Howard on the season. That was unbelievable, oh, that shot. Ball was smoked. Here's Ibadi as his 0 for 2. And he's down in the count. No balls in one strike. Look where this ball hits. About three feet to the top, Sarge. Oh, easy. But you, you could tell it was hard, had some more distance to go. Because it ricochets right off the wall as J. Rowe and Howard discuss where the ball actually hit. Bouncer toward first. We'll retire Ibanez for the second out. Well, yeah. Ryan, Ryan has hit two balls over that wall, over the batter's eye at center field during his career. Garrett Jones and the Pirates. Is the only other one to hit one over the batter's eye, but he has hit that wall a number of times since this ballpark opened. Well, that ball was, I mean, just smoked. 
as he drove the ball there. And you look at Abanez, his swing right now, just a little bit long. And when you get long, that's when you end up hitting pop-ups and not driving the ball or getting on top of the ball a little bit too much. There's Brian and Nora who's having a conversation with Wellemeyer. You wonder what they're talking about, Sarge. Well, it's probably hard to say. Maybe went out and gave a little bit of breather after the ball going out of the ballpark. Or maybe asking, hey, are you okay? And everything's fine. Well, two away here in the bottom of the fifth. Matt Stairs is 0 for 2. Stairs is grounded out. He's flied out to center. Trying to count no balls and one strike to him. Matt Stairs timing has been off uh, for a while here now. Kind of undecided on different pitches. A lot of times when you go into a slot as a hitter, you know what you're doing wrong. The difficult thing is trying to correct it. The Mays would say that all the time. Hey, you're going to go into a slot, but you got to try and get out of it as quick as you can. And you can do that by getting jammed, staying through the ball, as opposed to trying to get the head out. Little cue shot left side. Lugo bobbles. And he just gets Matt Stairs. The inning is over. Boy, this sold out crowd. They saw a long one. Ryan Howard in his 25th home run of the season. Off the batter's eye at center field. Pen. Out of the pen and into the fire on a nightly basis, the men in relief enter the game with little margin for error. On call at all times, the relief corps is a unit that throws everything they have for one inning or sometimes even one batter. All season long, this unit has been putting an end to rallies and putting out fires. And it is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. We're here for you every step of the way. Well, there is the Phillies bullpen. Boy, a lot of changes in that bullpen over the last couple of weeks. Yesterday, of course, there were two additional changes made. Kyle Kendrick was called up from AAA Lehigh Valley. There's Kyle walking uh, into the shade. Steven Register was also summoned from AAA. As the changes continue, Clay Condry had to go on the DL. Andrew Carpenter was sent back out. And speaking of the bullpen, the series finale of the pen airs tonight. At 8 p.m. on the MLB Network. When the game's on the line, they get the call. Unprecedented coverage and access inside the Phillies bullpen. That's tonight at 8, only on the MLB Network. Top of the sixth inning, Joe Blanton has a three-run lead to work with. Facing Julio Lugo, Albert Pujols, and Matt Holliday. Lugo was retired. On a line drive to Chase Utley his last time up. Hasn't made an easy out yet. 
Well, he's got another base hit. Yeah, that's his 22nd hit against the fighting fields. Well, you get some guys. I mean, and there are some teams who just, no matter what, the ball is going to find a hole. And evident right here of Lugo. Why? It just happens. That's just you feel comfortable when you come in. Obviously, he wasn't doing this in Boston, or they wouldn't have released him. But he's hitting everything on the nose. You wonder if it carries over at all. Well, for Lugo as he continues here in 2009 with a new club. Well, keep in mind too, a lot has to do with the position of the lineup. When you have our Pujols hitting behind you, the same like I had Michael Jack, you're going to get fastballs. Pujols is one for two. He has singled. He's flied out to right. Cardinals leaders in batting average. Rogers Hornsby with a 359 batting average. Albert is fourth. Just ahead of Stan the man. It's an off speed pitch. It's truly amazing. And again, Albert Pujols, he'll have those numbers because he does know his strike zone. And he talks about that. And Balls that he can think he can handle. That could be two. Feliz to second for one. An easy double play. Another 5 4 3 double play. Second one of the game. That really helps out a pitcher when you can get two outs that quickly. Oh, and not only that, helps out that a pitch count. More importantly, Albert hits the ball so hard and he pulls off that ball. You can see that as he opened up. Nice 5 4 3 double play. Good turn by Utley. That's what happens instead of driving that ball the other way. He comes off the ball and he hits it hard. Gets a ground ball. Here's Matt Holliday, who is hitless in two at bats. He's going to sack fly on a walk as Albert catches his breath in the Cardinals dugout. Holiday, this series is six for nine. And it's one and two. Talked about going to St. Louis and playing in front of those fans. Those fans are some of the more knowledgeable fans that are that are in the game and one of the few fans that don't boo their players, whether or not they're doing good or bad. Of course, you wouldn't boo them if they're doing good, but those guys. When you're doing bad, uh, they still applaud you. Is basically what I'm talking about. Doesn't happen in most stadiums. To right center field, that's going to find the gap. And Holiday's got another hit as that one rolls to the wall. They'll stop at second base, so it's a two-out double. That's his fourth double in the series. And it comes with two away, and Blanton now will have to deal with Ryan Ludwig. Well, the, the same, just like with the fighting fields, they have so many different weapons now. Easier for Tony that he's got a club that can now come up with two out base hits. Last year, DeRosa, the best two out hitter on the Cubs team. And Matt Holliday, one of my favorite players in the league, just because of the effort that he he gives. And when you stay in there and you don't bail, you're going to get hit. You're going to take some hits. The other thing too is that the, this middle of the lineup, even with Ludwig, who's not a household name, I mean, there's no, no team in the Central. I mean, the Brewers have Braun and Prince Fielder. They don't have a third though. With it. I don't think there's a team in the Central that can match the middle of this lineup. Well, I mean, particularly with Soriano struggling with the Cubs. Well, even if he wasn't, I mean, for me, in the way this kid hit last year with those 37 bombs. Then you're adding Madden here, and already a good hitter, Pujols. One and two, the cap to Ludwig. And they can pitch to him. They can be pitched to him. And, you know, I do like, obviously, the Philly squad a little better. But when you have a guy like Carpenter on the mound, or, you know, their ace, your ace, it becomes almost a test match. Charlie making sure everybody's okay over there. That ball flying over toward those two photographers pretty quickly. 
of self-defense there. Check swing by Ludwig. And he got that one off his foot, so he stays alive. The count remains one and two. Seventy-eight pitches for Blanton. Very good splits. Twenty-five balls, fifty-three strikes. And those double plays it helps him out. Hit the center field. Victor Reno will have a chance. He's playing pretty shallow. Holiday does run okay. Say about average. Has a good secondary lead, and that's how you score your runs on that secondary lead. Blanton looks like he's going to get out of this potential jam. Feliz down the line is there. The inning is over. Good job by Big Joe. He strands a runner at second base here at the top of the sixth, and the Phillies lead it 5 2. taste that never fills you up the difference is drinkability by Ford Fusion Hybrid the most fuel efficient midsize drive one today and by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals call 1-800-JEFF now all the young fans today received the Shane Victorino t-shirt compliments of IBEW local 98 and it's a Hawaiian theme fanatic needs a little extra grass there to make sure that he's uh covered up in that dance <laughs> Back to 2007 when the Shane Victorino bobble figurine was given out on his day. He had that game winning home run the opposite way. And on a hot afternoon, the Phillies have hit two home runs one by Chase Utley, the other one by Ryan Howard. And we start at the bottom of the sixth Pedro Feliz, Paul Bacco, and then Joe Blanton. Had a 5 2 game against Todd Wellemeyer. I mentioned before that today is the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies up in Cooperstown, New York. Jim Rice, and Ricky Henderson are the players that are going in. And Joe Gordon, the former second baseman for the New York Yankees, going in as well. And Sarge, you know, those were guys that played during your time, particularly Jim Rice. I mean, those are two pretty good players right I there. I thought uh, Jim Rice should have been in the Hall of Fame way before now. Pedro rolls at the shortstop. Oh, and Pujols is pulled off the bag. And they're going to try to try to tank Pedro Feliz. He may now, have been out because now, he, I don't go ahead. He, he looked like he was going to go to second, but never got past the right field line. But the way uh, the first base umpire Gary Cedarstrom signaled, he 
was almost as if LaRue had tagged him. He might have been out. Well, he was undecided, and it has to be the intent to go to second base. You know, and obviously it was in his line. Watch this. He pulls off of that ball just a little bit. It's that ball hard. Lugo just throws this ball away. Now, see, thinking about it. See how he had those little tippy toes yeah. there where maybe he didn't go across there quite as bit. That's why you continue to hustle for the little leaguers out there. And kind of just turned on around. Then he said, well, maybe I better get back. Yeah, Davey Lopes was signaling to get back to the bag. So the Phillies do have a base runner to start off this bottom of the sixth inning in a 5-2 game. And it's 1-0. Oh. Sarge, I agree with you. I, I thought Jim Rice deserved to be in before this. I'm happy that he's able to get in. Ricky Henderson, of course, is a you know, a sure fire hall of famer is the all time stolen base leader in baseball history. Yeah, and I, I liked uh, what he was talking about and saying guys going through the Hall of Fame should be clean, period, and left it at that from the beginning of your career until the end of your career. What won the count? Ricky Henderson con continues to talk in the third person. Yes, he does. Now, with Jim Rice going in, it opens up a, somewhat of a debate about others that might deserve to get into the hall. Yeah. You and I talked about this last week off the air, but, you know, after talking to Andre Dawson, I mean, that's a guy that I think should be in the Hall of Fame. Andre Dawson should be in the Hall of Fame. Ron Santo should be in the Hall of Fame. And really, basically, the only thing that Ron Santo has, well, he has more 300 years than Mike Smith. Mike has more home runs, and that's about it. Almost the same kind of all-star, and I for one, and especially since Ron Santo hid his uh, disability, which he had diabetes and didn't want anyone to know, and still put up the numbers that he did. He's true Hall of Fame. One and two, the count to Baco. He chops one foul. Well, I was wondering if, if Rice now is in, does that open the door up for an Andre Dawson? I would think so. I would think that, for me, Andre had... He has stats to really open up his own door. And they've let players in that really, you know, didn't have all the numbers but were great players. Roberto Clemente, his uh, uh, career was, was cut short. 3,000 hits, though. Exactly. But uh, you have uh, Sandy Colfax, Hall of Famer, because of uh, the way he threw the ball. And let's face it, those no-hitters and dominated. Baco sends one to the air to center field. It's pretty deep. And Keel going back at the warning track. Has room and makes the catch. And back to first goes Pedro Feliz. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. Runner on first. And Joe Blanton will bat with a 5-2 lead. And Ricky supposedly has been taking some, I don't want to say therapy classes, but he's been taking some speech classes. And he says that field fans want to, here, Ricky, say and keep it short. Kind of tell it like it is. He is quite a character, I've got to yes, tell he you. He is. I mean, scoring over 2,000 runs. I mean, it's got to tell you, the guy was on base, all, I mean, every day, over 2,000 runs. Blanton mostly, most likely up there to sacrifice with Feliz on first. And one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Bunts it toward first. That's a dandy of a bunt. Sacrifice will be successful. Two away. So Blaine will go back to the dugout, greeted by Bill Thompson. Oh, this is what you like. This is the kind of attack that you like where you continue to put pressure on the opposition by having runners in scoring position. Guys are having pretty good at bats against Todd. And he says he does like starting. Used to be in the bullpen. I think you'd probably rather start than be in the bullpen. I would think that's that your, is that's your goal, yep. Uh, closer, at least Greg Maddox used to say that. A little easier to say that, though, when you're pitching the way that he does.
Jimmy's 0 for 3 this afternoon. He's flied out to right to center. He's popped out to third. And he's had two balls and no strikes. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Mets have taken a 5-3 lead over the Astros in the top of the fourth. Angel Pagan has an RBI triple. Two and two the count now to Jimmy. Sneak that 92 cheese on the inside part of the plate. Ball tailed back just a little bit. Cadillac time again for J. Row. Ball didn't take long to get out of there at all. Oh my, here it is. Well, you can see the hit. I just hear the sound of that. When you hear that crack, bad things are getting ready to happen for the opposition. Nice grab by that gentleman out there in the stand. Catching home run number 10 for Jimmy. It is the 20th run he has scored in 20 games for the Phillies. And for the Phillies, it's their third two run home run of the game. Yeah, that's a little smaller Cadillac. Maybe one of those El Dorados there. The bigger <laughs> guys will drive the Coupe de Ville's. Nice short swing, too, by oh, Jimmy. Boy. When you're short and quick, and again, it's it's. It's easy to talk about it when you see it, but when you're up at the plate to actually do it when you're going through a slump, that's the difficult thing. You know, hitters know what they're doing wrong, whether or not they're bailing or not, but you got to stay in there most of the time to be successful. Well, for Jimmy now, that's seven RBIs in two days, thanks to the grand slam yesterday and the two run shot here. Yeah, the count three and zero oh to Shane Victorino. Ball four and he's four. That might be it for Wellemeyer. He's at 98 pitches, but with the left-hander Barry Weinberg, the trainer, I think is going to come out. No, no, they just waved him off. Now Tony La is coming out. Dennis Reyes is loosening up in the bullpen. Wellemeyer is to his got his hands on his knees. Right. I think the score is bugging him, but something else might be bugging him too. Yeah, he's grabbing the back of his knee. And again, he's exhausted out here. He knows Tony's going to take him out. You see, he's kind of walking though with a little bit of a limp as he goes out. But when it's hot and humid, it's hard to breathe when you are a pitcher. Now take a look here at the last pitch that he throws. Okay, when he does throw it, he kind of. Grabs or points at that knee or around that area. Well, the left hander Dennis Reyes, the new pitcher for the Cardinals, will tell you about him when we return.
Louis Cardinals. It's big left header Dennis Reyes. He was in yesterday's game. This is his 47th game overall. No wins, a loss of 3.91 ERA. And during our break, we received some information that Sarge just wants to clean up the whole Cadillac discussion. He had mentioned that uh, Jimmy Rollins was in a, an El Dorado and that Ryan Howard's home run would put him in a, a Coupe de Ville. But you want to reverse that, don't you? Well, the El Dorado, I guess, now is the bigger. Biggest. Of the cars. Right. Right. So we're going to put Jimmy in the Coupe de Ville because it's a little bit smaller. Right. Okay. And then we'll let uh, Ryan Cruz in that uh, El Dorado. Or the Escalade, whichever, whichever you would one, like. Whichever one he wants. <laughs> well, Chase Utley will be the first batter to face Dennis Reyes here in the sixth inning with a runner on first. We'll keep an eye on Victorino. Chase is three for three today with two runs scored, two RBIs. Really got to like the way that Blant has been throwing, getting ground balls, had some double plays, and kind of keeping them at bay. Good job again. It always helps when you get those runs. And pitchers feel a lot more comfortable, obviously. If they make a mistake or two that haven't given up the lead. Not as much pressure, obviously. Chase with his three hits today is now four for his last seven in this series. He scored four runs in the last couple days as well. And he hits that one in the air foul. He broke his bat, it sounded like. Yep. And the count is 0 and 2. Sarge, when guys break their bat, like if you're Chase, do you know exactly what bat you want to go to after oh, you break your bat? Absolutely. You know, again, you'll have several bats that would be, oh, just about the same. I used to kind of mark mine there at the end of the bat. You're hoping, though, to keep that game, away, you know, for as long as you can. But I'd mark them one, two, three, four. Oh, you would, where, okay. You know, you would know. And these guys of today, they have their own bat bag. We used to have to stuff our bats in the same with everyone. And they had a tendency of actually leaving that, that bag at times for souvenirs for different people. But in today's game, everybody has their own bat bag, and it's got to be a mess, though, for anyone that has to make sure all those bats are there. It's got to be pretty heavy. Not only that, but also make sure all those bats get on the road. And the longer the road trip, the more bats that they take. I always wondered about that because, you know, guys break bats, and they go over, and the bat boy will bring out two, and they just pick one. But as you said, they probably have some kind of marking on it yeah. saying, all right, this is the next one in line. Yeah, they already know the bat that they want to be able to use. It's a little bit more similar to the one they had just broken. <laughs> Hard breaking ball. Well, Chase is down on strikes. He's retired for the first time today. Phillies, though, get two more. It was There were two unearned runs that crossed the plate of this inning, thanks to Jimmy Rollins. That is two-run bomb. Phillies lead it 7-2.
That man's working hard out there, the Philly Fanatic, on the Hawaiian theme day. Here's our Verizon Wireless game summary coming up after this pitch by Joe Blanton, who has done another great job here today, pitching into the seventh inning on a smoking hot afternoon. Jason Worth is in right field for the Phillies. Takes over from Matt Stairs. Pedro Feliz will give this a look. Paul Baco, and it's just beyond their reach. And here is that summary, Wills. From Verizon Wireless, Tommy, you see the long ball for the Phillies today. Three two run home runs. They got it going yesterday with a long ball, and that is one of the things they do best is hit home runs. Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, Jimmy Rollins. We talked at the beginning of the game that Wellemeyer has some problems with left handed hitters, so they threw a lot of left handed hitters in the lineup today, especially for that reason. And, uh, it's produced. I mean, these guys are going to be in there anyway, but they added some other guys. There's a pop up. As that keel was out in front, Pedro Feliz makes the call. What a way. Well, these lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize back, courtesy of Citizen Bank. Citizen Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. One out for Mark DeRosa, who homered his last time up. How good has Joe Blanton been today? Hmm. Well, he scattered five hits over six and a third against a, a very good offensive lineup. Yeah. He pitched out of a, you know, a little little trouble in that one inning. Of course, he got the double play, and then Holiday got another double. One thing they've done very well to this point, and still be one more at bat. They controlled Albert Pujols this year, and, and if you look and see the Phillies have a winning record against the Cardinals, one of the main reasons. Well, DeRosa's got another hit. Follows the home run up with a single to center. And he's on base here in the seventh inning. Joe Blanton has a couple of strikeouts, a couple of double play balls. Here's one of the strikeouts to start the game. And here's one of the double plays. And they both put around the horn. Five, four, threes. One of them on Albert Pujols right there. Longest one. It's a neat one to watch. Particularly when you have a guy like Pedro Feliz over at third. I know he has an error today and he's made nine errors this season, but he's so sure handed. You yeah, know, that throw is usually pretty clean right to second base. Right, and you always want it above that waist if you can get a second baseman wants it up chest high or in his eyes so he don't have to worry about that base runner. And he does that for, for Utley. Speaking of Chase, we'll call everybody off on this pop up by LaRue. Here's Colby Rasmus who will pinch it for Dennis Reyes on the top of the seventh inning. Cardinals have Blake Foxworth in their bullpen. He's a guy they just called up. They sent Josh Kinney down after yesterday's game. And LaRusso was saying that during the game yesterday when he was interviewed on, on TV that there's Hawksworth that if they had a tough day with pitching and at that point. You know, it hadn't happened yet, but it's almost like he could smell it coming yesterday that they would bring another guy up today, and that's what they did. Rasmus overall hitting 260, 11 home runs and 34 runs batted in. And they're still unsure of what they're going to do with this guy. You know, because the way their outfield is set up now, I mean, from a, an offensive standpoint, he's had a pretty good rookie year. Yeah, he's a nice player. Kobe Rasmus 20 multi hit games. He leads rookies in home runs leads them in RBI's leads them in total bases in hits runs scored. I mean the list goes on and on. Well he's not going to play any left field. No. Or not that much with the guy they just acquired at holiday. Center field is the question. Well, Ant Keel was struggling, and now he's picking up a little bit this weekend. One and two, the count to Rasmus. Got it! Joe Blanton finishes up the seventh inning with a strikeout. He strands one on first base. And how about the run for Joe Blanton? Another seven inning performance as he leads it by five.
the skirt off. Who are the two baseball Hall of Famers that have played for both the Phillies and the Cardinals? Wheels? Uh, the only one I know is Steve Carlton. Wheels, there's another obvious one. Really? Yeah. Give me a hint. He's got three names. Three names? Yeah. Goes by three names. I don't know. All right, here you go. <laughs> Had to do that first. Oh. Grover, Cleveland Alexander. I did not know he played for the Cardinals. Log back on the Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Thanks for playing. Dodge, stuff the fan. Nickname Old Pete. Grover, Cleveland oh, so Alexander. Now you're going to fill it all in for us. Well, uh, you know, once it's over. Blake Hawksworth is the new pitcher for the St. Louis Cardinals. You know 13. No, nah, well, I do it from just looking yeah. at it. I did not know it. Beforehand, they made a movie of that guy and Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan played right? him in the movie. Well, that's uh, that was my hint. I was going to say that, but yeah. you see Grover Cleveland, Alexander's Wall of Fame plaque, played for the Phillies from 1911 through the 17 season, mm -hmm. also played in 1930. How about that? Three straight years in which he won 30 games: 31, 33, and 30. <laughs> 1915, 16, and 17. Yeah, 1915 was one of the World Series years with the Red Sox when they lost to the, the Boston Red Sox. Babe Ruth was on that team. 1.22 ERA, a 1.55, 1.83. Man. So here's Hawksworth in his 13th game, or pitched in 12 games, excuse me, down in AAA. 5 and 4 with a 3.58 ERA. It wasn't until the first inning today that they officially made this roster move. At least that's when the announcement came through the press box. But we knew before the ball game that Hawksworth was here with the cards. And that Josh Kinney was no longer with St. Louis. And he will face the four, five, and six hitters for the Phillies. Hey, the Colorado Rockies will be here next Tuesday at 7.05 to start a three-game series. It wraps up Thursday the 6th with a Citizens Bank business person special. And also the pride of the Phillies print of Raul Ibanez. Thanks to the folks at Citizens Bank. You can log on to Phillies.com, make your purchase today. And the Rockies are right in the thick of that wild card race in the National League. And who would have thunk that at the beginning of the season? Brian Howard, three ribbies today. He's got 75 this season. And he had a long home run his last time up. Yeah, that looked like he was headed over the bricks. When he hit it, it just looked like it would have hit the top of the wall close to it. They throw him low pitches. Well, he hits those. We had just uh, gotten done talking about how you know, Sarge was saying he'd love to see Ryan even go closer to the plate. And see the leaders in home runs. Ryan leads Albert Pools by seven since 2005. Well, they've been trying to convince him to do that a little more. Because he's getting so much stuff away from him and he can't get to it or he turns it over. Right. Uh, but, you know, he's standing where he wants to stand. And he hit it where he wanted to hit it last time. Well, that was a long one. That was almost his third on Ashburn Alley. Two and two, the count to Ryan. The thing about him is when he does get a little bit closer and they pitch him away, he's, you know, he's just so strong that he can drive the ball the opposite field so well. Pulls that one to center. He's got another hit. See, they don't overshift him either. That's an out. So many teams put the three players on the other side of second base, and he loses hits all the time on balls like that. The Cardinals, they don't do it. Tony La Russa is signaling the infielders now, and the outfielders as well. With Raul Ibanez 0 for 3, 2 for 11 in the series. Raul scuffled on this homestand. Figure though the way he swings the bat, and he is about due to start getting into another good offensive run. It's that one in the air down the left field line. It's pretty deep. Holiday going back, and that one is gone. Another two-run home run for the Phillies. This one the opposite way for Ibanez. And the Phillies now lead it 9-2. to two. That ball really 
carried out of here. Yeah, it's flying today. You saw that on DeRosa's ball when he hit it out to right center. And uh, that one, you know, hit it in that short area down that left field line. And you said another two run home run for the Phillies. And this looked like it was going to be a really tough, close, tense game here today. I don't know, it could still get to that point, but it's a sure lot more relaxed all of a sudden. 26 home runs, 73 RBIs for Raul. And here's Jason Worth batting for the first time. Yeah, he's strong, boy. He hit balls the other way, and that's what they figured he would do in this ballpark. The way they can fly here. He's gone two, two, two the last few innings with two run homers. Yeah, three straight innings in which they've had a two run home run. And it's two and two now to Jason Worth. Jason overall batting 272 with 21 homers and 62 RBIs. He has had a a good homestand to say the least. Yeah, and the idea was to try and get as much as they could off the left, the uh, right hander Wellemeyer today, give stairs to Met bats, and then probably get Jason Worth into the game. And that's what's happened. Here it is, just a low fastball, and he got it up in the air. It's flying. Hit it to. See, he thought it was an out because you hit it there, you know. But in this park, home run. Pedro Feliz, another good day for him, two for three, another multi hit game. Hollins has a two run home run, Howard has a two run home run, Ibanez has a two run home run. Chase Utley really got it opened up for the Phillies back in the third with his two run shot. Well, the Phillies do hit a lot of home runs, and they're going to win games by hitting homers. And, and Joe Bland's just done a great job of, you know, keeping everybody nice and relaxed today where you're not having to come from behind and score a lot of runs. And they scored a lot of runs just because they're nice and relaxed. And he's going to get a chance to pitch the eighth inning. Yep. Little topper up the third base line. That's worth made a nice play on that one. And two outs. On a hot afternoon. Just trying to stay cool as best you can. Yesterday, there was some cloud cover midway through the ball game, so that kind of cooled things off, at least uh, in certain parts of the ballpark. And it started at 4 o'clock. That's true too. <laughs> yeah. Got a little bit of shade earlier yesterday yeah. in some parts of the ballpark. Yeah. Uh -uh, not today Tom. It's bacon out That's there. That's a good point. I kind of forgot about the 4 10 start. Yeah. Just coming up 20 minutes. Let's see. Yeah it started 4 10 yesterday. Now 10 of 4. Paul Bacco has base hit three at bats today. Too. Haven't seen this guy before. Fastball, breaking ball, changeup. You know, Paco doesn't hit a whole lot, but you can see by watching him as much as we've seen him this year. Why he's such a good backup catcher. He's got a live body for a guy who's played as long as he has. He's down on strikes. The inning is over, but the damage certainly was done by Raul Ibanez. He went the opposite way, a two run home run. Well, the Phillies have been whacking some two run home runs left and right this afternoon.
Your world delivered by Bud Light with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. And by Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines is ready when you are. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. Well, the heat has been on today, not only because of the Phillies offense with all their two-run home runs. They have four, but also because it's just flat-out hot this afternoon here in Philadelphia. And different ways to keep yourself cool throughout the day, including the baseball fan. Yeah. That's where everybody got the idea. It was for Sarge earlier this week when we were out at the Bud Light rooftop. You guys look a little uncomfortable. I was just catching some rays at that point. You look Wheels. uncomfortable. <laughs> you look you think, what am I doing out here on a day like this? It was pretty good out there, though. I love that spot over the Bud Light rooftop. That's probably a great place to watch. It the game. is outstanding. Just saw John Mayberry. He's checking into the game to play left field for Oli Banez. And Joe Blatt will go to work here in the eighth inning. And he'll face the top of the order. All right, let's think about this now with Blanton. And that's one of my favorite ways to keep cool on a hot day is some Italian <laughs> ice or yeah. even some ice cream. Schumacher's 0 for 3. Blanton, last three starts before this one, 7 and 3rd, 7 and 3rd, and 7. So he's gotten 7 here. It's allowed 6 hits on 2 runs. Well, talk about a bullpen saver. Slow roller left side. This will be a tough play. J. Roll bare hands throws. They won't get Schumacher. And there's an infield hit. Right now, they, you know, they don't even have anybody up in the bullpen. Now you get a couple base runners. Obviously, they'll have to. And what they're trying to stay away from is using the key guys at the back end uh, and give them another day off. I saw Tyler Walker was out there stretching before the inning began, and you know, depending, he could be the first one up. There's Walker and Stephen Register who just arrived yesterday, pitched in yesterday's game. Scott Air with the windbreaker on. And Julio Lugo, two for three today, eight for 13 in this series, and good riddance to this guy. Yeah, and you saw the good and the bad of Julio Lugo in this ball game, where he can swing the bat, and he really hurts you, and then he takes a routine ground ball, throws it away, and it turned into two runs. And he almost did that the inning before. Oh, and to the count to Lugo. Joe Blanton with the two runs he's allowed today has now allowed just four earned runs in his last 28 and two thirds innings. That is impressive. Gotten Lugo on strikes. Everything you hear about Joe Bland is how hard he works, too. You know, he, he's a big body guy, but he's not a big soft guy out there. He is in good shape and takes care, really works hard between starts. And this shows you how hard he works. Be able to go out there, he's 98 pitches on a smoking hot day like this, still be out there and still throwing quality pitches like that changeup. They say even before starts, the day he makes a start. He's always in the weight room, just pedaling away and well, trying he was, to get himself going. He was out there in center field today when the pitchers were out there stretching and exercising. He was out there and then just, you know, he didn't stay there the whole time, but he then he took a walk back to the clubhouse. So he was out there with his teammates this morning on the day he's pitching. Well, he's worked ahead of Albert Owen, too. Pujols is one for three today, including a double play. Three for 12 in the series. And he smokes that one. Look out. Look out is right. Everybody's okay. They're just looking for the baseball now. Down on strikes is Albert Pujols. Back to back strikeouts for Joe Blanton. And the fans could probably say goodbye to Big Albert for this regular season. Yeah, and if the Phillies win this game today in four out of five against the Cardinals this year, one of the big reasons it controlled that guy. This was a fastball, looked like, with really good movement. Yeah. Ran down, and he swung over. Four for 21 against the Phillies this year is Albert Pujols. Well, he's going to go be wearing out a lot of other people before this season's over. One home run. 
And as you said, Tommy, just four hits. Oh, and two to count to Holiday. Holiday wants to know, did I swing at that? Or was that a call strike? No, no, it's no, no, that was over the plate. I thought he may have swung at it anyway. <laughs> Now the fans coming to their feet. They're recognizing right here. This has been a strong outing from Joe Glenn. <laughs> he had a little adrenaline rush sure on did. that one. He's not a hard thrower necessarily, but he he was really trying to fire that baby. 92 miles an hour. Want a little help from Brian Anora on that pitch. It's great. These fans are tremendous and on their feet appreciating what Joe Blanton's giving them here this afternoon. Great effort. Two and two the count. Oh, Matt Holliday is. He just doesn't, you know, Tony LaRusse is seven and, and he's right on with it as always. He doesn't give up at bats. You know, it's nine to two and he's saying, well, I'm not going to swing. Or try not to if you don't throw me a strike. Down on strikes is Matt Holiday. Three straight strikeouts for Joe Blanton to finish up this eighth inning. That was a changeup. And watch this crowd react as he walks over to the dugout. They can appreciate eight strong innings from anybody. Six and a half games back coming into today's ball game. Their final visit is coming up at the end of August, the 28th, 29th, and 30th. Limited seats are still available for all three games. That Friday night game, don't forget, is the Cabrini College Retro Knit Cap Night. That's free to fans 15 and over. You can order your tickets now by logging on to phillies.com. Well, Joe Blanton's day is done after eight innings, and he doesn't look like he's even out of breath. That's amazing. And how about he was striking out three pretty good hitters. Yep. The last three hitters he faces on this steamy afternoon. Really impressive. Only the one walk. He's really cut down on his walks. 108 pitches. Just a great eight innings for the Phils today. And save that bullpen. Well, Greg Dobbs is going to lead things off for the Phillies. The pitch hitter. Facing Blake Hawksworth. Looks like that's Lidge out there. Yeah, it is Brad Lidge yeah. loosening up. They want to give him some work and also come in with, uh, you know, in a nice relaxed situation because he hasn't been in the game for a while. 2-0, oh, the count to Greg Dobbs. Lidge hasn't appeared since the 22nd against the Cubs. Yeah, and all they want him to do is come in and have a quick inning, get some people out. Let's go to Phoenix. There's a pop-up behind the mound. Leo Lugo calls everybody out. As good as the starting staff has been, it means that the bullpen hasn't gotten the same amount of work that they received the first couple months of the year. And Blanton alone sure showed what he has done his last four starts. And when Scott Air was saying this morning, he goes, Yeah, my grandmother came to town from Utah. She 
She's never seen me pitch professionally. She came to town this weekend. I haven't pitched. <laughs> she's never seen him pitch professionally. I guess in the big leagues. Yeah. No, but I mean, she still hasn't seen him right. pitch professionally. She's already out of play at home. Right. Jimmy Rollins sends one the opposite way. That's well struck. Holiday took a glance over to his left before he finished it off. Music from his native land in the background. Shea Victorino will walk to the plate. Philly center fielder Shane Victorino. Shane is two for three. He scored a couple more runs today. He's on pace for a 200 hit season, a 100 run season. That's a lot of production from the number two hitter. And he gets a line drive toward left center, and Keel finishes very quickly and smoothly to end this eighth inning. One, two, three, go the Phillies. Joe Blanton's day is done. Bradledge will take over as we go to the ninth. Top of the ninth inning to close out the, the Cardinals. And Brad Lidge in his 40th game. This is not a save situation. He's 0 4 with a 7.20 ERA. Again, he has not worked since the 22nd of July when he went two thirds and allowed two runs against the Cubs. So the Phillies took two of three from Chicago, won the game against the Padres on Thursday night, lost game one against the Cardinals, and then won yesterday. So they're trying to take five of seven on this homestand. And continue to legitimize their record here at Citizens Bank Park. He has season uh, high 16 over 500, of course, and then two over 500 at home. You know, I'm looking at the Eastern Division today, and there are very few teams playing that well at home in the right. East. I think the Mets are the best with five over at five over 500. Yeah, the Braves are four over 500. Florida is just one over 500 at home, which I was kind of surprised by that. Ryan Ludwig is the first to face Brad Lidge. And he hits one foul. This is also, as we mentioned, get Lidge some work, but you know, they just want him to have, have some success and go out and throw his fastball for strikes, get people out. And then uh, you get him, Charlie, get him some work today, and then, you know, you, you need to save the tomorrow night in Arizona. He won't be rusty. There's a lot of things going right around here, obviously, but one thing that has to go right is this man. Yep. Because soon we get in September, then all of a sudden you get in those tight games again, and 
you got to have the guy at the end of the game. Ludwig sends one of the air to left. John Mayberry. That's just to his left. Well, coming up after this ball game, it's the Phillies post game show on my PHL 17 with John Clark and Mike Missinelli live from Chickies and Pete's. That's after the game on my PHL 17. A lot of good things to talk about. That was a great catch that guy made. It was. After. Jimmy Rollins homer. Rick Ann Keel is 0 for 3 today. And Liz delivers a slider on the outside corner, 0 and 1. Last couple of days, Brett Myers has been around the ballpark. In fact, he was throwing the last few days as well. He was talking to Brett. Uh, he feels pretty good about his prospects of coming back at some point late August, maybe early September. He said from day one he'd be back before the end of the season. You know, Brett, how competitive he is. So it's not surprising. You know, sometimes just physically, what are you going to do? But in his case, uh, I don't think anybody would be surprised if he comes back and pitches effectively before this year's over. Two and two, the count to Ankeel. And He's another one of those guys, Tom, that'll will it, kind of like Utley. Yeah, and the thought would be is that he wouldn't have time to stretch himself out to be a starter, that he would help out in the bullpen. Right. Well, that's fine. Three and two to Ankeel. Pretty good out there. <laughs> one time they used it, one year. Yep. And he liked it, too. Line drive, base hit for Ed Keel to right center field. Torino is going to let it roll to the wall, and Keel is thinking about three. Nope, he's going to drop anchor at second. And it's a one-out double for Rick Ed Keel. The 95 fastball, 3-2 count right down the middle, and he just crushed it. So the Cardinals have a base runner here in the top of the ninth inning. You see a good velocity, but not good location right in the middle of the plate. Didn't want to walk him, and uh, Keel gets an extra base hit. Following today's ball game, the Cardinals head home to begin a homestand against the Dodgers for four games. That should be some good baseball. Yeah. Those, those two teams going at each other for four days. So St. Louis, they were trying to see where they were, gauging themselves in the National League with the series against the Phillies, and then the upcoming series against the Dodgers. Facing the division leaders. Well, they'll have their number th their first uh, number one, two, three starters ready for the Dodgers, too. I went to the count to Mark DeRosa, who's two for three. Carpenter will be able to pitch in that series. Pinero, of course. And Wainwright is the other guy in their top three. Shot right back toward the back of the Hall of Fame club. We don't get many up here. No. See, that's power on power. Somebody asked me the other day, has there ever been a foul ball hit up here? I said, yeah, but not many. Not in this booth. Which is nice. <laughs> Again, Lynch has it 0 2 to DeRosa. In tight, 1 and 2. Maybe one ball has been in this booth since the place has been open. Didn't Sarge catch a ball up here? No. No. He caught one in Cleveland one time. Made a great one-handed catch while I was hitting the floor. <laughs> two and two. 
there he is with fastball command problems. And that's the thing they're trying to get. Brad's ve uh, velocity is good. Those are 94 95s, but uh, you know, he's not able to, to throw where he wants to consistently. Rosa stays alive. By the way, Pedro Martinez is scheduled to make his uh, first start, rehab start for the Clearwater Threshers today. It, the game is supposed to start around 4:10, but there's a rain delay in Clearwater at this point. People are uh, looking forward to that outing from Pedro just to see what he has. First of maybe three or four before he steps back into a major league uniform. Rosa stays alive again. Two and two. This is not turning into that nice, easy, low pitch inning that they want. It's up to. So they're going to get somebody up in the bullpen just in case it gets prolonged. Yeah, Tyler Walker is up and throwing now for the Phillies. It's 18 pitches and there's only one out. Call strike three and Rosa knew it. That's a nasty slide. Wow. Kind of had him flinching a little bit because those inside fastballs. Well, when he throws one of those, man, that looked like last year. Ooh. Make you pull off up here. Well, now Joe Thurston is the batter with two away here in the top of the ninth inning. Phillies trying to close out this homestand. Thurston overall hitting 230 on the year. And he takes one low, one ball, no strikes. In the air, right side. This should do it. Howard sunglasses on in foul territory. Backpedaling, and the Phillies have won five of seven on this homestand. Another good homestand for the Phillies. Another good outing by Joe Blanton. And the long ball was truly the storyline. Well, yesterday and today. Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, Raul Ibai.